It's been a lot. <laughs> stressing me out right now to think about. I am still catching up, I guess. Did I need to reread these to talk about them? Probably not. Next up is another book that I despised. Well, hello. It's been a minute since I did a video that was bookish. I suppose an argument could be made that Wheel of Time is bookish, but I'm not talking about the books. I am very much not talking about the books in those videos. Anyway, so time for another catch-up session slash life update. Um, the life update is that I have a new job. So that uh, coincided, that like dovetailed not nicely <laughs> with Wheel of Time being a show that I decided I knew that I was going to be covering. So in September, I was wrapping up my old job, prepping for my new job, going out of town for several days. So okay, let's, let's start over. So in September, um, I was wrapping up my old job. Then once that job was over, going out of town. And then the day I got back from out of town, um, I went to Universal Studios. And then the very next day I started my new job and Wheel of Time had begun at the beginning of September. So I was like trying to cover that while doing all these things. And um, it's been a lot. <laughs> I knew it would be a lot. Um, and I, yeah, it was just a lot. And then I just, I just got behind because then like when I did have a weekend free, um, I was just exhausted. Cause like I hadn't given myself time actually to properly like recover. Um, I haven't fully unpacked yet from my going out of town in September. I got behind on filming. I got behind on reading. I got behind on, I haven't been as active in my discord. I've just been, I've just been swamped. <laughs> so I owe you an August wrap up because I did read books. Most of this stack, to be perfectly honest, is August because I did not read terribly much in September. I read the barest minimum of what I absolutely had to read for some kind of an obligation. Um, and I still haven't finished a couple books that I I really, really need to. So I just thought I'd do a quick video to catch up on all the reading I've done that I haven't told you about and to let you know why that's been behind and will for the foreseeable future be less con like I, I'm hoping to develop a more steady routine and Wheel of Time is over now. I'm, I'm not done with making my videos for Wheel of Time yet, but I think by the time this goes up, I will be done with that. I'm currently in the midst of that. Um, <laughs> so that has also been like a big suck on my time because those videos not only like take time away from videos that I would normally be making bookish, they just take a ton more of time to do unless you count like the time that it takes to read books. But I'm doing that too slash anyway. So like every Wheel of Time video, like I have to watch the show obviously, but I have to watch the show like extremely slowly so that I can like type out my notes as I go and often have to play back scenes um, because I want to make sure that like the thing that I thought I saw I did see or like to catch the line like the way that it was phrased if I wanted to talk about that. Um, so like an hour episode takes me like two hours to watch and then I have to like film the freaking video which is which is the part that probably takes the least amount of time. Um, although filming anything where I live takes a million years because I I cannot tell you how much footage gets cut from me just sitting here and waiting for the sirens to stop or the backing up truck to stop beeping or the just traffic noises to stop. It's a lot. So like, again, like a 10 minute video, there's probably like an hour of footage, at least half of which is just me waiting for noise to desist. And then editing. Editing the Wheel of Time videos takes forever because in addition to normally editing a video, which takes some time, it all videos take some time to edit, but I have to pull all the screenshots and enter the, all the screenshots and make sure they're like positioned correctly and timed correctly. And that takes it eh, at minimum like five hours. So yeah, that's been a lot. It's been a fucking lot. So we are in the midst of spooky season, which is my favorite time of year. Um, my favorite time of year for for food, for clothing, for reading, for watching movies, for everything. And I have a massive October TBR, which is what I'm filming after I filmed this, which I've kind of sort of started on, even though I hadn't yet wrapped up yet September and I still haven't wrapped up some books that I need to finish, as I said before. Anyway, yeah, so with Wheel of Time being over, me kind of like getting into the swing of things with my new job, finally like just taking time to just like rest and relax from recovering from my traveling and all of that. I have so many plans in October, which is, you know, stressing me out right now to think about. I'm going to see Hades Town for the fifth time. I'm going to Disneyland for like Halloween times. I'm having a friend over and we're going to see a play and also going to Universal Studios. We have Blades and Bodice Rippers this month, which we don't normally, which we have to also dress up for, which I kind of have sorted, but I need to like fully sort that out. And my brother's coming over and we're gonna do like a whole like Halloween time fun festivities together, which will just mean, it'll be fun, but it'll mean I have time for nothing else. <laughs> uh, my new job, I do work in the office, um, not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time. And so, 
just the fact of that means that I have less time because just literally commuting and I live really really close to the office but at least an hour a day is the commute and then before I leave you know I have to like get ready in a way that I don't have to get ready you know if I'm working from home so like it's just like a ton of time that gets sucked up by just the fact of getting to and from an office um, and then I'll just like feel slightly more drained by that because like after sitting in traffic when I get home I don't want to like do anything for a minute anyway I'm sure you all have jobs like you know what I mean but I'm just saying it's I didn't I was working 100% from home before so like now I'm working in a physical office, so it means I have less time and I have to kind of like adjust to this, readjust. I did used to have an office job, <laughs> like a physical office job. Anyway, yeah, so it's still crazy times. It's not all like, oh, we're all like relaxed now, everything's back to normal. It won't be back to normal. I still will post probably slightly less than I was for the time being. Maybe I can, you know, work up to more again in the new year or something, but I am still catching up, I guess. But we're back to doing at least a bookish video, so yay. And I think I've rambled for long enough, so maybe I should actually talk about the books that I read in August and September. And forgive me, but the top of this stack is August and it is now October, so I will do my best to remember my thoughts and feelings about these books, but it's been a minute, so bear with me. The first book that I read in August was Antimatter Blues, which is the sequel to Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton, and I like this as well. I think I like Mickey Seven slightly better, but I really 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 liked Mickey Seven, so that's not exactly like um an insult. Antimatter Blues, um, a lot of people said they, people were like poo-pooing Mickey Seven and then saying Antimatter Blues is worse, and I guess I agree that it's not quite as good as the first one, but I really really liked this. I don't understand what people are disliking about Mickey Seven. I don't understand people. So I, I'm a bad book reviewer, I guess, because like I'm not, when I like a book, it probably means that no one else likes it. And if I hate a book, it probably means that everyone else loves it. So you should just like come to my channel to find out the opposite of what you should be thinking. I don't know. I really like both books. So I'm glad I have them in the UK hardcovers and y'all are crazy. Now as to the specifics of this book, they're a little hazy, <laughs> if I'm honest. But I remember really enjoying it. And I remember thinking about how I was going to be telling people like, what the heck, why don't you like it? This is so good. But if we were going to like go through the specifics of it right now, um, if, if someone mentioned them to me, I'm sure they would like spark something. For me right now, like I vaguely remember what happens in this book. Um, and I remember thinking it was good. So there you go. There's my in-depth review. <laughs> um, the next book I read was, um, The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This is my second Riley Sager book, possibly my last Riley Sager book. The first Riley Sager book, Sager book I read, I hated. So I only got this because book of the month and I love this cover and also like, with thrillers um, in particular, I have often found that they are hit and miss. So like if I read a thriller from an author and I dislike it, I will possibly still give them a chance because there's plenty of like thrillers that I love and then other books by that same author I hate. So if I had started with the one I hated, then I never would have read the one that I really loved. So I was like, well, I didn't like that one Riley Sager book, but this one looks kind of cool. Maybe I like this one better. And I did like this one better. I did but I still didn't think it was very good. And I think that like by the end, it like really devolved into nonsense. It had pretty good vibes. It was pretty page turny. As thrill it's just like the one job of a thriller, I guess. And it's not the worst thriller I've ever read. I've read some much, much worse thrillers this year, but yeah, I got this for the cover and it certainly did not live up to the cover. I wouldn't like highly recommend this, but I don't know, like it was fine. <laughs> so if you've already got it or like, or whatever, like, you know, it was, it was fine. Not like a rant review or anything. It was, it was very, very mid, I suppose. Uh, the next book I had originally intended to do a full rant review for, but now it's been too long and I can't remember. I mean, I wrote down some specifics, but like my rage isn't fresh enough for me to like film a video that would do justice to my rage. Um, that was my rage when I read this. So Immortal by, uh, or Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong is a retelling of Antony and Cleopatra by the Bard. It was atrocious. One of the worst books I've read this year. I really wish I had had time to do the rant review because that always kind of cement something in my mind in the specifics. I was ranting to my patients about it as I was reading it and sending egregious quotes. Everything about this was awful, not least of which was the prose itself. The story also was bad. The world building was also bad. This was awful. I was <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Dang, I really wish I'd had time to do the rant review. I had, I was livid. So no, I don't recommend this to anyone. Not to Shakespeare fans, not to not Shakespeare fans, not to people who enjoy the written word. This was terrible. The first Chloe Gong book I read was um, her debut and I DNF'd it. This is an adult book. The others were YA. This is, so this is her adult debut. And this reads exactly like YA. It's like no different and it's terrible. I think this is, she's into, I guess, doing Shakespeare retellings. Um, 
I think she should stop. That's all I have to say about that. Next up is Hyperion, which was a reread for me by Dan Simmons because my patients and I um, are in theory reading the Hyperion Cantos, although we were doing every other month and we've already like lost some people who are not enjoying it. So we might give up on it. I, we were talk we talked about doing this and I wanted to do it because I did want to finish the Cantos because I had read the first two. And that's where we're at, the first two. Spoilers for the end of this stack. Also, this I was supposed to read this, I think, in July? And I finished it, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so I still like Hyperion. I liked it less on reread, and I'm currently, one of the books I desperately need to finish for tomorrow is Fall of Hyperion, even though I have read it before, but it's been a minute. And yeah, definitely I'm not really liking Fall of Hyperion that much. I feel like this is why I didn't finish the Cantos originally. So I'd kind of be okay with us not finishing it if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> Anyway, Hyperion I think is still quite good and I still would recommend Hyperion to people but there are some things about the like science fiction aspects of these books that um drive me nuts because they make no sense and not in a like we haven't invented that yet kind of way like in the rules established by the book books doesn't make sense and it, it drives me really 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 nuts and also Dan Simmons obsession with Keats is inexplicable and the way Dan Simmons writes like women and women's bodies and NSFW things is like not a fan. Anyway, that's my glowing review. I mean, Hyperion, I think, was my one of my best books of the year, the year that I first read it. I think it's fallen from grace a little bit for me, but Hyperion is definitely better than Fall of Hyperion. Ack! Ack! Next up was the buddy read for August. Yes, for August. <laughs> An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock. And because Alan was originally supposed to buddy read this with me ages ago and forgot, and he did already read this, then he joined us um, for our patron chat. And for the most part, Alan was very civil. Not not wholly civil, because this is Alan we're talking about. But for Nemesis behavior, I think it was very, very, um, very best behavior. <laughs> and and Alan and I discovered that we agree about Les Mis Rob, So that was a pleasant surprise. I didn't really like this book. Most of my patrons didn't really like this book. Alan really likes this book. But Alan, by the end of our chat, kind of forgot gave me I think is fair to say for not liking this book so I think that's progress and I think that should be celebrated but yeah I, I did not like this book I do not plan to read the second and third books um I do still like this cover and it's not the worst book I've ever read but the prose was pretty pretty bad next is the other read-along that my patrons and I are doing which we're doing simultaneously with Hyperion flipping back and forth but if we give up on Hyperion then we can just read these and that is the Hornblower books by um C.S. Forrester I love 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 the Hornblower like the adaptations I've seen them many times I own the box set so got you know my patrons interested and so we're reading the books we're reading them in chronological order not publication order which we collectively suspect is why this first book isn't as fun a read because it does read a little bit like just these short bursts of story that are kind of like filling in some details that because uh, he wrote like about later he started writing these books later in Horatio Hornblower's life and then went back and wrote essentially prequels about like the early years so if you start with the early years it kind of reads like someone's just like catching like oh remember when I mentioned he did this thing well here's like the full story of how he did that thing so it's not that fun as an intro reading experience for this series I can see why people recommend not reading them in, in chronological order but the adaptations are in chronological order so it was interesting comparing and contrasting with the adaptations so yeah um I really enjoyed it that's that being said and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the book and yeah yeah I'm I'm happy to be doing this and I get to picture Yoan Gruffid the entire time which is an added bonus <laughs> next up we don't really need to talk about this but I reread before they were hanged in the last argument of kings because Mara was reading them for the first time and she and I had our live chat if you missed it it's it's you know back a few and you know friendship saved she did not hate the first law <laughs> did I need to reread these to talk about them probably not but you know I read so many books that I hate that I have to sprinkle in some first law just for my sanity so anyway Enough said. Next is the Witcher read along. Um, the end of like the proper series um, on chapter three podcast we got to Lady of the Lake um, and in October we are concluding full-on concluding with Season of Storms. This is my least favorite book in the Witcher's series and I've read them all except for Season of Storms. I think this is also Bethany's least favorite. It is also the longest and it is also the ugliest in my opinion because look at how much purple there is. Like an obscene amount of purple. So anyway, um, it's still very interesting as a book and as the concepts that he plays with. And I did, I think I did enjoy it more the second time, partially because I knew what to expect this time. And there's a lot to unpack with this book and with these books in general, but I do think like it is narratively messy and could have been executed a little more smoothly is what I'll say about that. Next is a book that my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them in 
August. Yep. <laughs> and that is The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. And I despised this book. It was a very ranty vlog, partly because I hated this book so much, and partly because it was in the midst of me, like, like prepping, like, wrapping up a job, starting a job, traveling, all this kind of thing. So I was like quite stressed and tired and busy. And oh yeah, I'd, I'd just been doing the Wheel of Time videos. Um, yeah. So like I was not in a great mood to be honest, but I don't think any mood would have made me favorably disposed towards this book, which is terrible in my opinion, just so bad. So yeah, see, this is why I need to reread First Law because I keep reading stuff like this. Then next is the... September patron buddy read. Yes, yes. Yeah, these last three are the ones that I actually read in September. So <laughs> three books in September. The patron buddy read is The House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. This is my third T. Kingfisher, my second adult T. Kingfisher, because I read the baking one it was my second one, and I generally like that. My first one was What Moves the Dead, and I loved What Moves the Dead. Um, it's been kind of downhill ever since. I liked the baking one less than this, or less than that, and I like this less than both, I think, or maybe equal to the baking one, although it's extremely different. Hard to compare. Um, yeah. This just like, I just, it, this wasn't like terrible. Uh, and we're, we haven't had our chat about it yet. So I guess we'll see what other people think. A lot of people really, really love this. For me, I didn't find the characters terribly compelling and the story itself wasn't like engrossing or spooky enough for me to be like, well, the characters suck, but like I'm into the story or the vibes or something. Cause it was like a little bit more like, cozier, I suppose, than What Moves the Dead. Cause What Moves the Dead is like so atmospheric and creepy. This isn't really that creepy. I mean, it's got some creep in it. Not enough for that to carry it for me. And I think the strength of it for people who do like it is that they really like the character or characters. And I don't, maybe it was the narrator. Although I, I, when I said that I hated the narrator, a lot of people said they loved the narrator. So I don't know. Tastes differ. Um, I just, the narrator is, um, I think the main character, cause the main character has like a sense of humor. Um, like, and I say that in terms of like, a lot of like books will have characters that sometimes crack jokes, but it's like a feature of this that the main character has a sense of humor, like all caps TM. And I don't think the jokes are that funny to begin with. And then also I felt like the narrator of the audiobook didn't have any sense of comedic timing in like delivering the jokes that I already thought weren't that good and needed all the help they could get. So all of that together, I was just like, I don't find this amusing or charming and the story itself isn't that great. So I guess if the humor in this book works for you or you find it relatable, then I can see why you'd like it, but I don't and I didn't. <laughs> so I think that's what, ma what mainly broke it for me. But again, I don't, I didn't hate it. I was just like, that was really mid. So yeah, I love the cover though. And a lot of people like it. So my sense of humor is very much not a majority sense of humor. A lot of people like a lot of books that because of their humor and I'm always the one that's like I don't think this is funny so uh, you might like it. Next up is another book that I despised. Um, actually the best book I read in September of the three was House with Good Bones. It's all downhill from there. So Shark Heart by Emily Habick was my book of the month club book and I picked it because I was just like this is so weird. I initially like skipped over it um because like the, the very very short blurb was like oh a, a like newly married couple receives like a really receives like a really upsetting diagnosis and they like work through it and I was like oh it's gonna be like cancer. It's it's gonna be, you know, that. I don't want to read a book about like a married couple who's terminally ill and it's just sadness. But I was like, something possessed me to click on it because I think I just wanted to confirm. I was like, I want to know if I'm right. I bet it's cancer. And I clicked on it and they're like, he's diagnosed with turning into a shark. And I was like, okay, no, that wasn't on my bingo card. And so that was just so weird. that I was like, that has the potential to be brilliant if it like really leans into it and like is wild with the concept in a way that works. Like it, that sounds like it has a high, like high risk, high reward kind of situation where like that could be amazing, could be ridiculous. Unfortunately it was ridiculous. And like the book did not go, I don't really know how to put it into words. The book wasn't like very interesting or compelling to read. Um, and I also don't think that it knew what it wanted to do with this whole people turning into animals thing as like a medical diagnosis, because I feel like the strength of that premise is like it's metaphorical possibility and you could go really extreme with it, but then you kind of have to have like a, a very kind of like heightened non-reality to the story, if that makes sense. Like it has to be surreal. It has to be, you know, pretty extreme, I suppose. Um, like really lean into the concept in a way that's like kind of wacky or like that's what will make it work. But here it was like very like, I guess magical realism about it. And it took itself really, really seriously, but in a way that felt like 
I can't really take this seriously because he's turning into a fucking shark. So I feel like for it to really work, it would have had to have been like darkly humorous, if that makes sense. And it doesn't mean that the book ultimately has to be a big joke. Like it can have a serious like message, but its tone should kind of like acknowledge the inherent absurdity of its premise, if that makes sense. So I just feel like this, this idea still could work if it was handled by someone else with a better idea for like why they're going to employ this metaphor at all. Because it has to be a metaphor, right? Otherwise, like someone turning into a shark being your story, like there is no point to that story unless it's a metaphor for something. And I'm not sure that it was a metaphor for something, or at least not fully like thought through what that metaphor is. Um, and it was really, really long. It would not end. And the characters were like really kind of annoying and insufferable and inconsistent. I just feel like this book didn't know what it wanted to be. And it frankly would have been better if like the diagnosis had been like Alzheimer's or something, early onset Alzheimer's. Because that's functionally how it works in the story. But I feel like a lot of the world building of the story like was not thought through at all. Like forced euthanasia on people that turn into animals that won't like submit themselves to like living in a zoo basically. I'm like, I, I just don't feel like that would be the system. Maybe it would be, but in that case, I want the story about that. That's what this book should be about. But they just kind of like mention that as like, oh, that's background info for how this world works. And I'm like, I don't care about these characters. I am interested in why you think that's how the world would work. And wouldn't people feel some kind of way about that? But again, I just don't think this book was fully thought through. And then the book they chose for me to read and vlog in September, um, was God Killer by Hannah Kaner or Kanner. And I got this from Waterstones when it came out in the UK in like a year ago. It's only just now come out in the US. And this was terrible. Prose, terrible. World building, terrible. Characters, terrible. Plotting and story, terrible. I hated it. I hated it a lot. It was really, really dumb. And for such a short book, it felt like it took forever. Yeah, I do not recommend. This cover is stunning. The book inside, not so much. Unless we want to say that it's stunningly bad, in which case I will co-sign that. Oh, I, I mean, I obviously talked about it in the vlog for my patrons, but we also talked about it on Chapter 3 Podcast. And then quickly, I guess I technically read this in October, um, but I'm just lumping it with September. I just read Sleepy Hollow, not the whole collection. This is Sleepy Hollow and Other Stories by Washington Irving. I just read Sleepy Hollow because of the project I'm working on that I needed to read it for. Um, this was a reread. I read it in college the first time. It's super short. Yeah. So this too. <laughs> and then I am currently in the midst of Fall of Hyperion. Not loving it. Need to finish this before tomorrow. And I'm still reading Lightbringer. I haven't finished it yet. I will. I will. I will. I will. And those are all the books that I've, I've read in, in my absence in the interim since you last heard from me about books. Let me know in the comments down below if you're still alive. <laughs> Um, how you've been, what you've been reading, if you read these, if you were planning to and now you won't because I talked you out of it. <laughs> Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos, I usually say on Saturdays, but that is definitely not been true lately. So I, I post videos, I can say that with certainty. So, yep, like and subscribe <laughs> if you want to catch them when they drop. Uh, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.